let's go to God in prayer. Father, we praise you and we thank you for your constant love and care for each one of our lives. We thank you, Lord, that your grace has always been sufficient for us. And we thank you, Lord, that you continue to establish your word in this place. And you continue to cause us to receive the impartation that is only possible as we get into the dimension of your spirit. So Father, let your will be established. Your word be strong upon each one of our spirits. Let your word be like a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. We thank you, Father, and we praise you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Praise God. Give Jesus a good clap offering. And you may be seated. Thank you, worshipers and musicians. Uh, we have said that these two nights we will be sharing on prophecy and the end times. And uh, also, of course, every night we will minister to those who have come and you have a need for healing uh, in any particular area of your life. And uh, I have noticed, and uh, it is not, uh, we have had people heal of various ailments, uh, and uh, after many years they remain healed, uh, deaf and dumb, in various areas of um, uh, ailments. We have seen uh, cancers heal and various things. Uh, and we love to see the Lord work signs and wonders more and more. But particularly, I have noticed that uh, when it comes to back healing, uh, bones, or, or areas like that, uh, we have been getting uh, almost to the point of 100% of, of, uh, of results when we are praying in that particular area. So there seems to be a particular strength in that healing anointing. And uh, if you have those areas, know that uh, uh, you always can receive the healing and in fact the anointing is getting stronger and stronger so that even as you sit in the presence of God that healing will just flow into your life and as you enjoy just the Word of God. In, uh, in looking at uh, what's happening in these uh, last days, these end times, we realize that uh, at this point of time it is um, April, it's, it's still April, right? It's April. Yeah, I've been traveling, ministry so much, I lost track of natural time. And uh, this is April, and it's the year 2009. And the reason I say this is because there are some things we're going to share about that we're going to relate to the coming times and events. And uh, these messages are recorded and they're shared worldwide. And um, so sometimes people may only get to the message uh, at a different time and they wonder when was that message shared. And uh, so this message that we are sharing is on this particular time in April 2009 where we have seen the world going through a uh, recession that has never been seen before, uh, before in the manner in which it is occurring today. And uh, there are even greater things that will take place in the end times. There will be a great surprise to many economists. And uh, although I believe in doing the best research, and I believe in uh, education, and I believe in training, and I believe in analytical thinking. Uh, I also believe that we need to match analytical thinking and research with spiritual depth. And uh, it is surprising to me that um, uh, many economists did not predict what's happening today. And so many of you who are in the business world and in the professional world uh, are wondering how come this thing just came upon us. 
And I know many of you could be wishing, if I knew, I would have taken my stocks out. <laughs> And uh, uh, if you knew, you would have done things differently. And can you imagine all the best brains in the whole world, and they didn't know this was happening? So to a certain extent, we realized that uh, we can rely on the best knowledge we have. After all, this life is made such that part of the training is to work on our soul, our heart, our mind, our brain, uh, uh, to work it into walk in line with the best we know how. And, uh, but the fact is that there will be many more economic cycles that are unpredictable they're the best of economies and by the way they have different theories and if you realize that the more human human knowledge increases the more specialized the knowledge you can always find an expert that differ from the other so in the end we are left to which one is really true so we come to the spiritual kingdom of God and here's the other sad thing why is it that the body of Christ didn't pick this up? Right, we can look at the world and say, yes, they didn't pick it up. They don't know God. But why are the people of God and the covenant people of God not picking it up? We should be picking it up. Should we? Shouldn't we? Must we? We must. Because in the Bible, in the book of Acts 11, when the, a famine was about to come, God sent Agabus the prophet. And Agabus the prophet predicted in Acts 11 that there would be a great famine that was to come. And he even records in the book of Acts 11 that he came under one of those uh, Caesars. He recorded it as a historical point of view. But the fact is, he spoke about the event before the event. I mean, it's, it's many times after an event, whether it be disaster or something, and you have every Tom, Dick and Harry, not just every Tom, Dick and Harry, every Prophet Tom, Prophet Dick, Prophet Harry, you know, every Prophet Ahmad Akar Ramasami, <laughs> saying that, oh, the Lord did reveal that to me. <laughs> and you find some obscure words and word here and there and say the Lord reveal. But wait a minute, if it's so significant, why was it not made known more strongly and publicly uh, before the event. That's when we need the most help. After the event, post-mortem is always different. You know, hindsight is different from foresight. What we need is foresight to guide us, to lead us. And some of you sitting here say, is that possible? Is it scriptural? Have not you read the scriptures? Have you not read what Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 14, 15 and 16? That part of what he says to us, his covenant people, he will show you things to come. And he's not talking about just the prophets, although many times God doesn't do anything unless he reveals it to the prophets. So where are the prophets? What are they doing? And uh, if they hear, why aren't they speaking? Because many times, as I say, it's black, black, blur, blur, not clear, not clear. <laughs> so no one is bold enough to speak it out. And then some others are so bold, but they are the ones who don't hear clearly, and they boldly make many mistakes. <laughs> so we have to correct them because of false prophecy. But the fact is that the Bible tells us that He does show us things to come. And we need to discern what are the things to come. It's part of our heritage. And much, much even more, the ministers of God, the prophets of God, that we need to understand how to receive these things that God is speaking. And many times when we come to prophecy, as we look at the subject, is there is a difference between receiving a prophecy with a thus says the Lord and the interpretation of the prophecy. And the interpretation is subject to human level of understanding, subject to depth of God's word, subject to understanding of spiritual allegories and terminologies. God's word is pure. When he says, thus says the Lord, it's irrevocable. But our interpretation is subject to correction.
from one another. And like the Bible says in the book of Acts, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, let uh, two or three uh, now prophesy and let two, uh, the other two or three prophets judge. So apparently we got to judge a prophecy, we got to discern prophecies. And it is important to do so, especially in these last days and times that we are living in. And uh, even prophets themselves sometimes don't differentiate between thus says the Lord and I perceive. And so tonight as we teach, we will also mention what we perceive and what we see clearly to be the Lord. So that we will understand that there's a, a component that is our interpretation, a component that is the Lord. We need to understand what interpretation is. Like for example, if someone sees you know, the island of Singapore and then suddenly they see this big huge wave come and then it knock off you know, and it flow to the east coast and then it goes back, then people look, wow, is there another tsunami? <laughs> That would be a natural interpretation. So wait a minute, it could be a spiritual tsunami. It could be a spiritual force. Then wait a second, it could be saying, is this good, is this bad? You see, that one picture or one, one vision that God gave could be subject to so many interpretations. And that's where prophecies make mistakes. That's where uh, the gift of prophecy needs to discern what is right and what is wrong. And uh, so that's why we're looking at prophecy in the end times. Particularly, we want to see where we are in terms of God's prophecy, where we are in this world, and why some things are occurring out there in the world today. And uh, sometimes we can receive something from the Lord, interpret incorrectly so if the interpretation is incorrect the application will be incorrect so many mistakes so many lives destroyed and uh, just very quickly give an example how carefully we have to handle prophecy and uh, carefully we have to handle that says the Lord in, the, in those things. Let's look at the book of uh, Acts. The book of Acts. And um, we're looking at uh, Paul as he was traveling on his way to Jerusalem. He has ended his third missionary journey. And in Acts chapter 21, Paul wanted to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was in his heart. He knew that God spoke to him to go to Jerusalem. He also knew that when he goes, that his life will be in danger. He knew that there is a strong possibility that he will be in prison. He knew all these things. Yet he also knew it was God's will. He told the efficient Christian in the book of Acts 20, he says, you're not going to see my face again. See, he knew some things. See, even in those two little chapters, chapter 20 and chapter 21, we see this, this part here where he knew what was to come. And then you notice, uh, just to throw more things uh, into our kettle that we are brewing, the kettle prophecy, and uh, uh, do you realize that Paul also knew when he was going to die? His last epistle that we have, I mean there could be many others, but his last epistle that he wrote was 2 Timothy. And he says, I'm about to go home. I've finished the fight, I've run the race. See, he knew he was, his life was complete, completing. And Peter also said that in uh, the epistle of Peter. He says he's going to put aside his tent soon, referring to his body as the tent. And that he's about to go home. See, all these people knew what was to come. They knew the events that were to come. Jesus promised this to us, that uh, we will know things to come. And we need to follow according to what God has. And uh, we have lived so much in a church world and in a society that is, that is taken for granted what is normal Christianity so that what is really normal is here and our normal is here. 
So sometimes when you read books like the books by Washman Nee, the normal Christian life, you read it and then you realize you're very abnormal. <laughs> because the normal is here, you're here. And so we have to realize that knowing things about the future, perceiving things about the future is normal. Can just look at someone next to you and say, it's normal to see your future. <laughs> okay. So, you know why I had to say? Because sometimes when we have prophecies or we see visions and all those things, let me tell you, even when you understand about dianoia, seeing visions is also normal. Why X2 started with vision? Young men shall see vision, old men shall dream dreams. So everyone got covered. <laughs> Handmaidens, you know, they shall prophesy. Look, these are normal things. Our Christianity is so shallow that uh, what is normal, uh, uh, what is normal looks abnormal. And that's the purpose why we're here teaching the word of, uh, word of God again, raising the standard of Christianity, and let me tell you what we're teaching is nothing special. It's supposed to be normal. And God help us as we continue over these two years that we establish that this is normal Christianity and that's the revival Christianity, the day-to-day -day life. As we spread the word that this is the way God wants our Christian life to be lived. So you probably have found Acts 21 by now, right? So Acts 21, if you're having the same Bible as me, it's page 1219. <laughs> Acts 21, Paul was on his way to Jerusalem and uh, as he traveled in the ship, he says in verse 4, and finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. They po told Paul through the Spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. And this is very common. When Christians start moving into the spiritual realm and, and contacting the things of God and they start perceiving things and all these things, what they perceive and receive could be correct. We give them the benefit of the doubt. But what they interpret from their perception could be the very opposite of what God intended. And, uh, and you interpret it correct, incorrectly, your application will be incorrect. So there are three components to this. One is a reception, second is interpretation, third is application. Of course, some people's reception is completely out. Oh, I see something, I see something. You know? And then uh, what they see that something came from somewhere else. And let me tell you, even in the reception, uh, uh, we hope that one fine day we could do a seminar. This night meeting is not enough time to do seminar. Seminars we can go, uh, we can go deeper in the application. Like for example, uh, when 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 you pick and uh, when you pick people up, you know. So let's say a random. You know, I don't know this brother, right? So you know, I know some of you, so easy to pick up some things. But uh, you know, let me shake your hands. Thank you. And uh, so as I hold, hold my brother's hand. And if I'm spiritually perceptive, I would immediately begin, you know, to perceive some things in his life. Right? If I'm percept perceptive, that's spiritual perception. Now, what I perceive in his life is just perception. It's not that, says the Lord. And then sometimes if you're open and your dianonia is working normally, <laughs> Right? Normally means, you know, it's not black, black, blur, blur, it's clear, clear. <laughs> so you know those definitions by now. You know, those of you who don't know what these terms mean, go back and uh, listen to those uh, messages again. And so, if your dino is, is working properly, as dino, and I began to perceive this person, right? And uh, so I began to, what I began to perceive, you know, I began to see colors, and uh, I began to see uh, the sea, and I began to see the ocean, you know? So, these are just perceptions. My dino is picking those things up, you know? And I see, you know, this, uh, it's not the normal, uh, I'm seeing a picture here, and, and this picture I'm seeing is not a, uh, a normal sailboat or anything. It's really like uh, those kind of sailboats like uh, sportsmen like to go to. 
You know, there are different sailboats. You could go to the, the, the 18th century, those exploratory sailboats. Your hand's not getting tired, right? Okay. So, and, um, so and, and those things. But this one is like the sports type of sailboat. And uh, it's going forth and, uh, and uh, sailing. And I, I cannot see you in my Dianoia. I see a sailboat and I'm looking for you. Hello, in the Dianoia, right? I cannot find you. But uh, as I allow it to flow, see, God is writing in my Dianoia perception. And as I perceive uh, in those areas, and remember when you operate in dianoia, you don't operate in dialogismos, which is the logical part of your mind. That you operate afterwards. You operate your dialogismos during the second part, the interpretation. You don't operate it in the reception. Because you do one thing at a time. And so, as I, I see this sailboat, and I just let it flow, and uh, then I begin to uh, uh, see those areas. Uh, it's like uh, you are uh, there's there, there's someone else uh, controlling the the main boat sailing. It's like you're helping, and you're one of those uh, in the, in the boat. They're helping uh, people. Uh, you know how it, as as the when they do sports in a sailboat, that uh, the others that when they move and they move the ship, all have to move in the same direction. They got to set the sail properly, and then there's a captain is going forth. And I see you, you know, as one of those people helping. And then the scene changes and. I see you slowly taking on the leadership role. Now this is what I see and perceive in my dianoia. Right. And uh, thank you. That's a good handshake. And uh, now that is reception. And I had to differentiate uh, in any part uh, of that reception that is, you got to put your dialogismos, which is your rational thinking aside, while you allow that to flow. And as it flows, then, uh, then the dialogismos come, that the interpretation come as to what that means. And uh, to interpret what that means, I will need my analytical thinking. Now, if my analytical thinking is not renewed by the word, then in Malay you say habis. <laughs> You know, you might begin to, you know, say, God, now here's all the wrong stuff. So this is not the right stuff yet. Let me give the wrong stuff before the right stuff. So if my interpretation is wrong, I will say, oh, God wants him to be a sportsman. <laughs> oh, God wants him to go and sail. God wants him to buy a boat. See all this nonsense. See how terrible interpretation are? Huh? That is why the, the natural mind, the analytical mind must be subject to the spiritual mind. The spiritual mind thinks in pictures, not in logic. That is why 1 Corinthians 2 says, the things of the spirit are foolishness. Don't seem logical. But the, the, the other part of our mind, the noose, which is our soul mind, seeks to think logically. And we need logic. I love maths. I love logic. I love science. We need to train that part with the Bible, with the Word of God. But if, and if our soul mind is trained properly, then our interpretation comes out better. And I've seen good prophets and give a prophecy functioning. People actually tune their reception very well. And some of those people who can receive well, unfortunately, they are not good interpreters. And heaven help you when they try to interpret. You could go the very opposite direction as these people in Acts 21. And, uh, and uh, so, as they receive those things now, if I'm trained correctly, I understand uh, what's happening in this interpretation dimension of what God is saying. And all this is just dianoia level operating. I have not sense that says a lot coming, but I sense it's coming close. And he said, how, how can it be? Remember, Smee Wiggers would say that if the spirit doesn't move me, I move the spirit. You know what he means? It means that he placed himself in the position where the spirit can move. And he could sense it, then he moves. And uh, it's just like, uh, for example, if we want revival, we need to give time, correct? Time to pray, time to seek God, time to be in a meeting together, together with the believers. Uh, uh, that has to be done, and that takes commitment. So all those things, we must pass those stage. And those are the natural things we, we, we must get past. And so there is, 
uh, as, I, as I allow the dianoia to flow, that's like committing myself to flow in that direction. Opening myself and then I open for when the Lord wants to have a word. Now here is where the correct interpretation of what I'm saying comes to place. And it helps when I don't know the person. Sometimes it helps when I know it also uh, able to get another different direction. And, uh, but definitely I know that from that, it is uh, uh, the, f- the first area that uh, is that uh, is the understanding that, uh, that you are doing something at the, at the side. It could be uh, some industry, it could be your job, it could be anywhere. I see so many possibilities. And uh, that God is about, and this is a part where as I seek to interpret, interpret understand, I'm beginning to hear the Lord speaking. Not my spirit, but the Lord. And I'm seeing that the Lord, and I, and I bring this vision to the Lord and say, Lord, what is this? See, I rely on the Lord to help me interpret. And then I sense the, the word of the Lord coming and now I begin to hear some scriptures and the reminder of some scriptures. And here, here is where your knowledge of scripture helps. So as I seek to understand and bring that vision to God, remember, if the Holy Spirit gives the, inter- the vision, the Holy Spirit gives the interpretation. We don't try. So as I surrender it to God, I have these scriptures of how God opened a door for Paul to the Gentiles. How God opened doors. And I know that the open doors is not just my spirit, that's God's word speaking to you. And so the Lord is saying that he, He's opening doors to you where before you have been helping people, you have been uh, serving along like you're a team player all the time. You're one of the team players that uh, always been doing in your work, in your industry, in, in whatever area. And God is going to bring you to the area where you are now going to become the leader of a team. And that is the door that God's going to open to you. And uh, as I sit, say, say those words, and you see, I'm obeying God, and I say those words, God is also giving me a direction where, uh, where, where the opportunity is given to you. I see the same boat, and uh, like you're supposed to be leading, and you're wondering, Lord, am I supposed to do this? Do I have the capacity to do, do, do this? Is this your will for me? And that's where prophecy confirms what a person is already seeking God's direction. And the Lord is saying that the door that He opens for you, the opportunity that is open for you to be leading a team, a whole team in that direction, is His door opening and it is His will for you. Praise the Lord. What profession are you, by the way? I just resigned. You just resigned. When was that? Uh, End of last year. End of last year, just to seek the Lord, and you've been seeking God for direction. And before, were you working like some sort of team things with other people? Well, the Lord says He's going to open a door for you, and in this door, you're going to be leading. You see how important the word was to him. Say, I have no idea that he just resigned. I have no idea where he is, but that is definitely God's word for you. That a great and open door. It's open to you. And when you read scriptures, uh, you'll find that, uh, that Paul, uh, Paul, when I now began, my understanding of scriptures helped to apply. So I'm able to apply more how you, to your situation. Because how did Paul get to the open door? There was a Barnabas who took him to Antioch in the book of Acts chapter 11. And in Antioch, Paul served for about a year or so. And then the Holy Spirit said, set me apart Paul and Barnabas for the work which I have called them. Then they went through the first missionary journey and at the end of the first missionary journey, they came back and you know what they say? God opened a door for the Gentiles to us. So some of those stories and principles are going to apply to your life. So that's where knowledge of the word is important in interpretation. The more word you know, the better, the more solid. And the sad thing is a lot of people are not solid in the word. Therefore, the interpretation is not very clear and not very strong. Because when the Holy Spirit works, what is His material? Our experience. And 
the word because he gave the word so the more word we have the holy spirit can draw it out from us and put them together and say this is what it means